A new version of Betaflight is out. Betaflight 270 just released seven hours ago as of the time of this recording. And it actually has been a long time since Boris released a new version of Betaflight. 261 came out on April 8th, over a month ago. It wasn't too long ago that Boris was banging one out every couple days. And over on the RC Group's forum, he says, well, I just basically have got everything right and how I want it to be, and there's no need to update it. I can't think of anything to make better. That's certainly a good position to be in. But he did find a few things to make better, and I'd like to walk you through um, some of the major things in Betaflight 270 so you can decide whether it is worth it to you to update. So the first thing I see here is that the MultiWii 2.3 PID controller has been removed. Now that was removed some time ago, and then after Boris got tired of working on Lux Float and Rewrite, he added it back in, and he started playing with it. The thing that MultiWii 2.3 brought to the table was this kind of dynamic rates, PID adjustments at the end of the stick travel, where you could get much faster uh, rotational rate at the end of the stick travel than with Rewrite or Lux Float, which have a more gentle... Uh, rate curve. Boris took that same concept and made it a part of a thing called Super Expo, which is now a feature in Betaflight, regardless of which PID controller you're using. So the thinking here, I assume, is that with Super Expo available, there's no longer a reason to have the MultiWii 2.3 PID controller around. He took the best part of the MultiWii 2.3 PID controller, which was its Super Expo function, and put it on everything. So there's no reason to have it anymore. Lux Float and Rewrite have been reworked over the months to basically be the same under the hood. People ask which is better, Lux Float or Rewrite. And it used to be that there were some really substantial differences between Lux Float and Rewrite under the hood. And, and you had to really think about, you know, which one flies the best for me. That is not the case for Betaflight anymore. It hasn't been the case for a while. In fact, it, it was thought that they were identical back in 261. But Boris was going through the code one day, he found this little difference in D-term scaling in LuxFloat, and now it's been fixed. And basically, LuxFloat and Rewrite should function exactly the same, really exactly the same. You should be able to copy your PIDs back and forth between them. I don't know if it's true that the rates are the same between them. They used to be different. Maybe they've changed and now they're the same. But according to Boris, the PIDs should be exactly transferable between LuxFloat and Rewrite. There have been some improvements to Blackbox. The PID configuration information has been added to the Blackbox header and other configuration parameters. This is a feature that was asked for some time ago over on the Blackbox thread. Uh, the ability to dump your PIDs to, into the black box header so you could have them, you know, every time. I mean, it's just a little bit of data at the very beginning of the file, so it's not like it's going to slow everything down. Just the minute you arm, dump all that stuff. Why? I've asked if we could just do a full config dump in the first half second after you arm. Just dump everything there. That's not something that's in there, but there are some additional configuration information that is now in your black box header, and you won't have to be keeping copies or doing other things to remember what your PIDs were when you're looking at your black box logs. I don't know how this will be integrated into the viewer. I'm going to assume that the black box viewer hasn't been updated to reflect this, so you'll actually need to go and open your black box logs manually in order to see this information. But if you're the kind of person who's using black box, opening uh, the log in Notepad won't be a problem for you. Flight mode events have been added to black box logging. I assume when you say flight mode, you mean angle mode, horizon mode, etc. Switching flight modes added to black box logging. Very nice. Super Expo. Super Expo. I have a video about Super Expo. If you want to know what Super Expo is, you should go watch that video. I'm not going to explain it to you right now. But Super Expo used to apply to the pitch and the roll axis only, but not the yaw axis. People wanted it on the yaw axis. Now they can have it on the yaw axis. Congratulations. I-term reset. So the issue with I-term reset is that when you do a flip or a roll, the I-term can build up within the flip or the roll. Uh, the copter is maybe moving slightly slower or slightly quicker than the PID loop strictly wants it to be, and the I-term accumulates error. And then at the very end of the move, when the copter is stopping, the I-term unwinds the error. The net effect is that there is a rebound after the move is finishing. As the I-term the I term is saying, hold on, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, through the whole move. And at the end of the move, finally the copter stops and the I-term is like, no, slow down even more. And then there's this rebound. Okay. The way to fix that, and Betaflight added this functionality at least in 261, 
Uh, no, I'm flying 2.4, and it's there in 2.4. So at least as far back as 2.4 is to have the I term zero out when the copter is moving faster than a certain rate. So you do a flip or a roll. The I term is just told, just sit down, I term. Shut up. Don't do anything. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you back when we need you. And the idea is that when you're doing a flip or a roll, you don't need this very strict position hold that the I term gives you. And that prevents the I term from building up error and allows you to run higher I gains without the risk of rebound at the end of a flipper roll. Now, in 2.4, the I term reset was, I think it was just a standard thing. I'm not 100% sure. I don't think you had to do anything to enable it. In 2.6, it was a part of Super Expo. If you disabled Super Expo, you didn't get the iTerm reset. And what I ended up doing was, uh, on my copter that's running 261, is I have a Super Expo factor of 1. I don't really want Super Expo, but I want the iTerm reset. So let's just turn Super Expo on with a factor of 1, the, the smallest number it can possibly be, and then I get the iTerm reset. Well, Betaflight 27 gives you the ability to have iTerm reset even with Super Expo turned off. So now I don't have to do that anymore. Also, if you're using Super Expo mode, instead of the iTerm reset, where the iTerm is zeroed out during flips and rolls, it can actually be an iTerm limiter. And what that means is that the iTerm will not be forced to zero, but it will be prevented from going above a certain value. Now, is that better or worse? I don't know. Again, this is flight testing and find out, but there it is. TPA has been added on the yaw axis, throttle PID attenuation. I have a video on my channel about TPA. You can go watch it. But now TPA applies to the yaw axis. It didn't used to. It only used to apply to the pitch and roll axis. Min check. A while back, Boris reduced the default value of min check. Min check defaults, I think, to 1100, and that is way higher than most people need it. Most people's transmitters are well capable of going below 1100, and it's not. It, it, you basically end up with a bunch of dead band at the bottom of your throttle that you don't need. Okay, so Boris reduced min check in. Uh, I don't remember what version it was. He reduced it to a more reasonable value. Well, the problem is a whole bunch of people do have transmitters that can't go below 1100, and they were all saying, "Why can't my copter arm?" Boris was getting 27 messages a day from people saying, "Why doesn't my copter arm?" And he was like, "Fine, fine, we'll put it back. <laughs> fine, okay." So min check has been increased, uh, presumably to 1100. I don't know what it's at. You should go ahead and lower min check to the to a low value if you have a transmitter that can go below 1100. The guideline I use is whatever your transmitter goes down to, let's say your throttle goes down to 1,000, I would set min check to like 1,005. You know, you don't need a lot of dead band down at the bottom if you have a, a transmitter with a half-decent gimbal. You will always be able to hit that value, no problem. Dynamic PID implementation, P-term accelerator. Uh, I don't know the in details of how this works. I saw some discussion about it on the RC Group's thread. And I'm going to tell you like a 10,000 foot overview. I'll probably get some details wrong, but hopefully you'll know a little more when you leave than when you came. Basically what this does is under some flight conditions, it increases the P-term to sharpen the copter's response. And in other flight conditions, it reduces the P-term to soften the copter's response, basically allowing you to get the best of both worlds. So for example, there's times when you might be able to have a really high P-gain, like times when you're softly flying gently around, but there's times when you would, a high P gain would induce oscillation, such as when you're really banging the sticks, doing pylon turns and racing and jamming the throttle. And basically the dynamic PID implementation figures out when the P term can afford to be high and when it can afford to be low, giving you basically the sharpest response under all flight conditions. Oh man, did I weasel my way around that topic? I don't know a lot about that. If I knew more, I'd tell you more, but I don't. So, eh, that's there. Uh, you know, that's the best I can do. What do you want? <laughs> um, yaw p limit. Yaw p limit is similar to a uh, function um, yaw jump prevention. It used to be that yaw p limit applied to some of the PID controllers, and yaw jump prevention applied to the others. I think yaw p limit was for PID controller three, and yaw jump prevention was for PID controllers one and two, which of course are rewrite and lux float as we know them now. But I believe that yaw jump prevention has gone away and it's been replaced by yaw p limit because why would anything ever keep making sense? And uh, anyway. What yaw p-limit does is this. There's a problem with copters where if you do a, sh a sharp yaw move, at the end of the move, when you center the stick abruptly, the motors can surge 
trying to stop the copter, and if everything's not perfectly in sync, the copter will jump. It'll climb, it'll it become destabilized or gain altitude. And what yaw P limit does is it limits the magnitude of the yaw P term when the stick is centered. In other words, at the end of a yaw move and prevents that. Now, the thing is, if this number is too low, then you'll have soft stops and even overshoot or rebound at the end of yaw moves because the P term won't be authoritative enough. If this number is too high, then you will get bounces or surging motors at the end of the, the yaw moves, or maybe your copter will become destabilized. The thing is that copters have gotten lighter, ESCs have gotten better, braking is better, motors are better, and the bottom line is that many copters today can afford to have a much higher yaw P limit, and in other words, sharper and better yaw response than they used to be able to back when this first happened. So Boris increased the configurable range for yaw P limit, presumably because copters can afford to have a higher limit than they used to be. This is a really, really cool one. Improved RC Expo step resolution. You know, you put RC Expo, you know, Expo on your pitch and roll, and it, the configurator draws that nice curved line. Did you know that there's actually uh, only like five steps in that curve? It's really a bunch of straight lines, boop, 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 right, with, with five steps. Well, Boris increased that to more steps. So if there were five steps, then now there's five times as many, presumably there's 25 steps. What that means is that there will be a smoother curve in your stick response. If you've ever felt like your copter goes from moving slow to quick when you've got Expo, this may be why. And you should have a smoother response now with 2.7. Filters are optimized to provide the best possible flight characteristics. Less aggressive filtering is used. If your setup is noisy, you need to adjust the filters. I will tell you my perspective on this. Boris is, I know Boris tests with noisy old copters, but my perspective, way back when, this was all first getting started, before there was soft filtering, Boris said, hey, you should try setting gyro LPF from the default of 42 to 256. My copter flies great that way. And I tried it, and my copter had so much noise and vibration, it was not nearly enough filtering for me, and I couldn't do it. And I was like, Boris, I don't know what kind of magic copter you're running. So listen, when Boris says less aggressive is filtering and your, your setup may be too noisy and you'll need to adjust the filters, there's a very real possible... Uh, re real possibility that your setup is too noisy and you will need to adjust the filters, okay? So pay attention to this section and if you have signs of excess vibration, pay attention to this section and do what Boris is telling you. And that's it. That's the end. Now you know hopefully more than you did about Betaflight 2.7. The real reason to go to a new version of Betaflight is that potentially it flies better than the others. I'm really excited. I just built this Mixuko and I've been tuning it for a video series that's coming out soon. I've been tuning the PIDs and one of the last things, I guess flying great, but the last thing I can't get rid of is a little bit of prop wash oscillation and there's just nothing I can do to get rid of it. Maybe Betaflight 2.7 will do the trick. We shall see. But in the meantime, happy flying.